Hello everyone and welcome to a resin art unboxing video. This is the first of its kind on this channel and um, I'm Diella, your host, and basically I'm starting a new craft. I'm not sure how much I'm going to enjoy it or not. Like it looks really fun, but obviously having never tried it, I don't know how fun it is. So I've ordered some, some supplies to try and I'm going to take you along this journey. So any videos that I'm going to be posting uh, shortly after this video that I'll do with resin are definitely not going to be like how-to tutorials, more just kind of a craft along with me as I discover how to do stuff and how not to do stuff. <laughs> so I did open some of the packages previously um, just because I ordered them off Amazon and I wanted to make sure that it was all correct and I didn't have to send them back so some of them are open so for example I have purchased this craft resin creative liquid um, so it is an epoxy resin where you mix um, the two different parts and then it will cure over time um, it does say non-toxic so no VOCs, no B, uh, BAP, BPAs, <laughs> but I will be wearing protective, um, I'm going to wear gloves and I'm going to wear um, a face respirator mask um, just to be safe anyway. But um, so basically, oops, this is what it looks like. You have A and B. There's um, just some information on here and you will just mix the two different parts together. Um, so this is the hardener and the other one will be the resin and yeah basically um, I have never used this so I don't know much about it but that is what came in this box Oops. and then to go along with that I also purchased oops, these epoxy resin dyes from I got this off Amazon and um, Fans Ariche, Arici, I'm not sure how you pronounce that, but anyway, um, so these are some whoops, inks that or dyes that you can add. Also came with some beautiful kind of foil that you can add glitter. I love this purple, blue, pink color. It's just perfect for me. Um, and then yeah, these are basically just colors you can add to color the resin. So I'm quite excited to try that out. And then also bought one set of molds of, of um, Amazon so these are coaster molds these the this is the base for the coasters that you will um, kind of put them in and the round ones I believe you just put them in like that um, and then these are the actual molds for the coasters themselves so these are silicone molds so you just make sure that there's no dust or anything in them and then you pour in your resin and then once it's hardened you can just take it off because the resin will not adhere to the silicone I believe that's in theory <laughs> what's supposed to happen um, so yeah we've got I feel like I'm missing around one I might have dropped it somewhere um, yeah because there's four square ones there should be four round ones but I will look for that just now anyway so I just thought it'd be fun to start off with some basic things like coasters so I'm going to put these to the side and we can get to the more uh, unboxing part of this video where I'm going to open some packages that I got off Aliexpress so this is the first one that arrived. Okay. So I got some of these flowers. They look a bit more squished than I was expecting. Um, these are meant to be inclusions, so you can add them into the resin. Um, I might have to flatten them out a bit because they're kind of squished, like you don't want it to look like that. And also I wasn't expecting these backs, and the reason for that being is that that's going to stick out in the resin. So this may have been a bit of a fail. Um, I'm going to, like this one doesn't look too bad from the front, but I need to see if I can remove this without, maybe if I put some glue, it'll keep all of these together. Although I think 
this little thing goes all the way through to that center. So this might not work for what I was intending. Um, but I mean, these are pretty little flowers. I could use them to decorate other things. That's not a problem. But um, yes, I actually don't think these are going to work for inclusions. Then these are some uh, leaf stickers. You can't really see them through this package very well. So these are just some stickers. Again, you can stick them down in your coaster. You would actually put them upside down because this, the back of this is going to be the front of your coaster. So you can place it like that. You put some resin in, you put that down, you let it um, get harder and then you can pour in more. And then at the end, you'll have a nice design in your coaster. So that is one of the things I ordered and those I think will work very well. The other thing to note is that these are kind of like plastic stickers. Are these even stickers or they're just plastic shapes? I'm not sure. Oh, it says PVC sticker. So the thing to make sure is that it's not um, paper. Again, this is not from personal experience. This is from research. If you use paper stickers, you need to seal them before you do the resin. Otherwise, you can have issues with the paper and the resin. Oops. Okay. Then what is in here? Oh, that sounds like a Yes. So these are little heart sort of confetti pieces, which I also thought would look really nice in some of the pieces. Um, that's empty. Um, so I just love these colors, the pinks and blues. There's a little bit of yellowy orange in there. I just think that will look really nice. Oh, let's look at these. So this is, I bought some molds as well. This is a diamond shape mold. So this, I believe, is, oh, it does stand flat. That's very nice. Um, so basically you pour it in and then you will get something in the shape, which I thought was really nice. And it's got um, a kind of uh, bar through here that will leave a hole. So it basically is like a bead, which is very nice if you want to hang it up. I love sparkly things and I really wanted to make some of these to hang in my window. So that's why I purchased that. Um, this, I believe, is a hair stick. So I've got quite long hair and I like to use hair sticks to um, put my hair up with. I do notice that it's quite flat. So the back and the, the two sides, and actually part, all of the sides, is going to be quite square. Um, so I don't know how well this will work. Um, but we'll find out. That was part of the reason why I bought these off AliExpress, so that I could find out and it wouldn't hurt my bank account too much. But if this works, this will be great because I know some other people with long hair who hopefully will enjoy these sort of things as well. Put that back in there. And these are stirring sticks. So let's open up, I'll just open up one of them. So basically when you're doing resin, you can just use um, like a lollipop stick or something to stir, but I wanted to get these because they're these ends. So this feels like plastic, but this end is silicone. And that means that I can mix it up and I can clean it off and I don't have to worry about kind of contributing to waste and that sort of thing. Um, I know <laughs> getting these things in all this plastic packaging is not great for waste. And also I know I do a lot of diamond painting, which I am conflicted about the impact on the environment. Um, but where I can, where possible, I do try my best to do my best to not have things that will impact the environment. So using these means it's completely reusable. And so that's why I purchased these. They also has a little scoop on the end. I believe that's for like if you want to add some glitter or something. But this part is for mixing because this is the silicone. Okay, and then count this. more flowers and they also have these back pieces I'm really gonna have to try and see if I can make that work 
because that is quite disappointing. These look really nice. I think they would be really nice in some coasters or that sort of thing. Um, I'm going to have to, if you have any suggestions on what I can do to snip off the back, of, I mean, maybe I can just try one of them. Well, let's try now. Um, I will pause the video and get some more suitable scissors. Okay, I decided instead of scissors, I'm going to try this with um, some pliers. So that would actually work. It doesn't have to be completely flush. Oh, let's zoom in a bit. Um, it does not need to be completely flush because the, there is some depth to these coasters. Um, once that's kind of stuck down, hopefully it won't stick out too much past the coaster edge. Let's see. I think that would be an okay depth. It looks like it covers. Um, so that is actually, that's good news. And maybe I could do the same thing with these ones. Let's see, these flowers are a bit thicker, so I might have to use something that has a bit more depth than these coasters, but I just snip that off there. And that might still stick out too much. I'm not sure, but it does still maintain its shape and it's not going to come off. I'm sure if I cut it right, oops, down at the base actually aren't wide enough see yeah anyway we will play around with these and see if we can get them to work but I do think that these little ones will probably work uh, if I snip off the backs put these back and then we have the big one the big one I think I'm going to have to put this to the side and pull out the pieces one at a time. Otherwise, we're not going to have enough space on this table to have a look. Let's move that because it's blocking light. Oops. Okay. So, I'll just take this out because it'll look nicer. How adorable are these? This is actually bigger than I thought it was. I thought it was going to be a bit smaller. Um, but I just think these are super cute. And part of the reason behind getting this was because I saw that when you mix up resin, sometimes you don't you mix up too much when you're making a coaster and you have left over. And in order to stop wastage, you could always pour in to other molds that you have lying around um, and just kind of use them use the ends of your projects up in them and then eventually you'll have a cool layered multicolor thing and so I wanted some smaller these are actually a bit bigger than I was thinking but I wanted some smaller pieces that I could use um, just to kind of use up any waste pieces and I love animals so I thought these paw prints were very cute we have some more inclusions here oops these are stars very pretty and this is again in an effort to reduce wastage oh that looks like it doesn't fit very well oh no that's fine I was worried it was kind of curved in on itself but it sprung back into shape so that's good so these are basically measuring cups do they have measurements? They do actually have measurements on the side. You cannot really see that very well, but there are measurements. And this is, again, basically some people use um, plastic cups, like party cups that you like disposable cups that you drink out of for mixing and then they throw them away, which there's nothing wrong with that, but I would prefer to use something reusable. So these, again, are silicone. So it's basically like a silicone mold. Um, it doesn't adhere and anything that's left over will just pop right out when you're done. So that is why I bought those, just to, again, try and reduce any wastage. Oops. Running out of space on my desk. Okay. This one, I'm not actually going to unroll right now, um, because there's not really much to see. It's literally just a silicone mat, which will be to protect 
any surface that I work on. So I'm actually planning on doing this in my utility room because it has a good extractor fan and because it's a place where the cats can't get to. So um, the silicon, I believe, takes at least 24 hours to cure. And so you want 24 hours where you're not going to get dust on it and you're not going to get cats knocking it over or eating it or anything bad. <laughs> so my plan was to do this in the utility room and there is a counter in there so I'm going to spread this over so again any spillages will once it's, you just leave it to harden and you can peel it off again not speaking from experience speaking from research so that is in theory what's supposed to happen so this is my silicone mat put that there These are some more inclusions. Some little, little flowers, which are really cute. I'm actually not sure if these are paper, so I might have to be careful. Yes, wood pulp flowers, chips, epoxy rolled, <laughs> epoxy resin mold filling. Um, so I need to be careful. How do you open this? Oh, the screws. Oh, that's a really cute container. Um, I'm not sure if I need to be careful with these. Oh, they're colored on both sides. That's nice. Um, I'm not 100% sure about how these will go without being sealed because it does say wood pulp, but then it does also say that it's meant for epoxy. So I might try one or two of them, um, and just see what happens. Oops, excuse me. This is a really cute container. And the rest are just molds. I got a unicorn mold. How cute is that? Now, I'm not very um, clued up. Like I said, this is my first time trying out resin. I know there's a difference between deep casting and sh like mid pours. And with deep casting, you need a different type of resin because it can heat up too quickly and it can cure too quickly. It can destroy your mold. So you need a specific type. And I don't know what the threshold is. I presume it's for, for volume, like how much liquid there is. And I don't know when you tell, <laughs> is this a deep pour or is this a mid pour or whatever. So I'm a little bit nervous about that. Like this is starting to look a bit on the large sides, like that's going to have a decent amount of liquid in it. Um, so I don't really know, but I will find out, I guess. And this is so you would put it like this this is actually a ring holder so it will have like a base mold where you could put like any little trinkets or earrings or bracelets and then you put your rings in the middle here um this is i believe not a deep pour this uh, would just be like a mid or shallow pour because it's hollow so although that looks like it takes up a lot of space you're not pouring into this bit you're pouring into here and it's thinner so i believe that this would not count as a deep pour this would just be like a mid or shallow pour so anyway so that is uh for rings and jewelry and things and i thought that would be really nice this one my diamond painting friends will know Oops. so this is a pen mold and it does come with the pen so i believe you stick whoops there's like a little bit there you stick that in there you stick that in that end and then you pour your mold and it's on your pen very nice pen but I'm wanting to see if there's a way I can do this for diamond painting pens um, because I can't do wood turning yet. <laughs> um, no, I'm not sure if I will learn to turn. The, I think I've said in a previous video, there is a place near me that does actually teach turning um, on a lathe. But I wanted to see if I could just cast like I have this pen here, which is a beautiful pen from Neptune Resin. And this was just cast. This was not um, turned. So I'm not sure how I'm going to handle the end, um, whether I should put the tip, like get one of these tips and put it in there before I cast, 
or whether I would drill out a section and then insert it. Like, I'm not sure. So that's going to be an experiment. But this was specifically bought with diamond painting in mind. Oops. Oops there. The next few of these are going to be diamond painting in mind. This is another pen mold. Um, it's kind of hard to show you. This one is just kind of uh, sort of rectangular in shape, uh, like very kind of straight sides. This one has a bit more detail, more rounded. Sort of, it almost reminds me of like maybe a Harry Potter wand or something like that. So um, this one did not come with the pens, but you can see there is a place to insert your pen like that in there so again we'll see what I can do with the nibs I don't know how that's going to work and this one I'm very excited about because I haven't seen anything like this um, with other resin artists So I don't actually know exactly how this works, but this is basically for a fountain pen. Um, so I believe you cast the different... I don't know. <laughs> there's no... Obviously with these kits, there's no step-by-step -step instructions. I assume I just cast into there. And I don't think you... No. I don't, maybe you put that in there? Because that fits really well. Hmm. I don't know. I'll have to see if anyone has any suggestions, but basically my thought was that I could cast kind of shorter diamond painting pens. I've seen some really cute smaller ones that just have like one end on them. So it would have this cute kind of, I don't know if you can see that, it's like a kind of almost diamond, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, so it'll be hexagon shape. Um, and yeah, so... I'm, again, not really entirely sure how it's meant to be used, but I thought this could be useful for diamond painting. Um, I don't know that we would need these bits. What is... You pull that in there and then do what? And you wouldn't be able to get it out because this is really solid. Maybe that's just air? Oh, it's just air gaps. Or maybe you put that in there and then pour in the resin through there. I don't know. Anyway, but I was thinking of just pouring straight in here, sealing it off, drilling a hole, putting the nib in, and then you'd have some smaller diamond painting pens. Just a thought, we'll find out. <laughs> so now that my desk is a riot, <laughs> I think that's it. Um, like I said, I've never actually done this before. If anyone has any tips or tricks, I mean, I have watched a lot of videos on YouTube and I have read quite a few blog posts and things on doing resin, but obviously any more tips I'm very open to, especially if you have any ideas around how to do this for diamond painting, if you have any suggestions on deep pores slash mid pores, that sort of thing, um, I'd really be open to advice. But for now, I'm going to love and leave you. And I think this will be my project for the weekend. And I'll see you next time. Bye.